Okay, okay. So, uh, hello everyone, welcome to PromCon. Uh, I am Julien Pivoto. I am a member of the Prometheus team, uh, working on the Prometheus server. You might also have seen me on the Alert Manager and other repositories. I try to help where I can. Uh, I am also responsible for the long-term support release of Prometheus. I'm around that later. And I am working at Oli, so we provide Prometheus support. Uh, so, I will update you today about what's new in Prometheus and its ecosystem. So we will cover mainly the Prometheus server, but also uh, what's going outside of it, like uh, the app manager, the exporters, and the community overall. Uh, I will uh, dive into more or less one year of news. But yeah, in a project such as Prometheus, you know, there are a lot of moving pieces. Uh, so I will only scratch the surface. I will only. Uh, show you uh, relatively few things. There will be talks about some of the things I will be speaking about, which will go much further into details. I want to thank everyone which has, who has been contributing to all the projects, uh, because uh, we are 20 team measures, but there are many, many, many uh, more contributors. Um, I will show many features and announcements, but there are also uh, many, many people which are fixing bugs. Uh, improving the performance of the uh, different components. So thanks everyone for contributing. So let's go with uh, Prometheus itself. Uh, uh, one year ago, we announced the agent mode, which was contributed by Grafana. Uh, the agent mode in Prometheus is basically uh, optimized to do remote write. So you can have an agent mode um, in the edge of your uh, infrastructure, and then it will only do the service discovery, the scraping, and the remote write. This is useful when you are in uh, an, an environment when you don't need local alerting rules, or when you don't have that many resources, and you just want to remote write to uh, Cortex, Thanos, Mimir, or any other remote write endpoint, then you can use the agent mode. Um, so the agent mode, I think it's still mark experimental, but uh, a lot of people are running it already, so if you need, if you are optimized to run a uh, remote write, it can be interesting for you. Uh, the other topic in Prometheus is service coveries. So service coveries is pretty important in Prometheus, and uh, there was a moratorium a few years back, but since we ended the moratorium on the new service coveries, we have many new service coveries. Uh, a few of them are notable. Uh, for example, we have Docker support now, so you can directly um, discover the containers that are running on your machine. Docker Swarm, uh, we have added PuppetDB, so you can, if you are automating your infrastructure with Puppet, you can just query PuppetDB to see, okay, what do you need to monitor, uh, which is not limited to uh, the specific Puppet uh, Prometheus repositories, but like, you can decide that you want to monitor all the nodes that have a certain package installed. We have a HTTPSD, which I will um, explain later on. Um, we have Kuma, which is another CNCF project, which uh, has been added as well. And uh, yeah, the last one that we added was OVH Cloud, so it was contributing, uh, contributed last week. So it's uh, in the latest release of Prometheus that went out today. So uh, with all those new service coveries, we hope that we bring more use cases and that we are even more useful to the users. As usual, we try to follow the same philosophy, so you have a lot of labels to deal with your different uh, services. The main one that we have added is really the HTTPSD. Uh, what is it? Basically, um, when you wanted to integrate your own target with Prometheus, you had to use the file SD, so to generate your target in a file, and then Prometheus would read the target, um, which can be practical if you have a sidecar, and it has some advantages, but uh, in many cases, it was not that easy to always deploy sidecar next to your Prometheus server, or when the source of truth is not reachable easily from the Prometheus server itself. So we implemented an HTTP service recovery. Uh, it can work, it works over HTTP. So uh, we have uh, the, first, the very first one to integrate with that was, I think, Netbox. So prior to that, with Netbox, you had to um, 
you had to have a sidecar, and now you can just have a plugin sitting in your next box setup itself and just discover your targets uh, using HTTP. It's even more practical because now you can do it in any language. Any language basically supports JSON, uh, which was not the case when you want to integrate, for example, Netbox. I was looking into integrating Netbox natively in Prometheus, but there is no uh, really nice uh, Go uh, wrapper for Netbox, so you have to do it all by yourself, which is um, not always practical uh, when yeah, the other language is Python for Netbox, so it's not really practical to say, yeah, you need to write Go, uh, a Go client for it. So HTTP uh, service recovery. We also see that some of the um, file SD implementations now support both file and HTTP, so you can decide when you de where you deploy them. So overall, I think it's a win for the users. When it comes to uh, relabeling, um, Relabeling, uh, now we have added mo even more labels that you can use to configure your scripts. Mainly the script interval and script timeout. What does it mean? It means that um, prior to this change, uh, if you have a Prometheus job, all the targets in a job would use the same script interval. Uh, but now you can actually uh, fine tune that and um, decide, okay, for some targets based on some labels, I will script them at a more or uh, at a more frequently or less frequently. So you can uh, use the script interval and script timeout. There is a typo in the slide, of course, so script interval is with two underscores at the end. And uh, when I also, when I, when we work on the IONOS cloud, uh, it was not returning really nice labels, so we added also new uh, labeling actions. So you can turn your labels uppercase or lowercase uh, easily when uh, you do the service recovery. So let's go to PromQL. Um, I have a Prometheus server. So uh, PromQL, we have changed quite a few things. Well, we have improved quite a few things in PromQL. Um, so the first thing is that we had users coming to us saying, hey, yeah, but we are uh, using Prometheus with wine turbines, and we would like to do trigonometric function with the wine. Uh, so now we have added quite a few trigonometric functions, like uh, you can now get easily uh, pi in PromQL, and you have all the functions like sinus, cosinus, uh, like you would expect. like this. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's uh, float 60 for fun, right? Um, you can, you also have, uh, uh, well, you can also convert from a radian to degrees, all that kind of things. We have also added a couple of functions which are useful for every user. So we have, for example, uh, the last over time function. So. Um, okay, I will just so yeah. Uh, normally, this Prometheus instance should connect via remote right to the demo, but Wi-Fi being what it is at PromCon, uh, we will not get uh, remote right to the uh, remote tree today. I think. But it still works, so you can see the last over time. And if you graph it, uh, let me just disable the, or just try to change the Wi-Fi. So basically what last over time is doing is that it will just look for the last value in uh, the last one over which uh, before you had to do an average or take the maximum, 
uh, which is not really useful. So I came up on stage at PromCon uh, two years ago saying, yeah, we have a SMS provider, but the API is not super reliable. Uh, and so we had to use recording rules to achieve the same. Now we can do it natively in PromQL, so we know, okay, this is the last value we did get for that uh, metric. And if it's gone for 20 minutes, well, we just put 30 minutes in the query and we have the, the recording rules always working, which is a really nice improvement. We don't have a first over time because I think it would confuse users due to the way that the selectors are working in Prometheus. Uh, but if you want the first over time, usually what you want is actually the offset uh, in PromQL. So let's... Okay, it doesn't. So let me just change the configuration. And also, then we will query a local node exporter. Okay. So now. Uh, wait. Also, this year we have completely removed the old UI. Uh, so this is using the new uh, fancy UI with auto completion and all the things. So no. No, we don't have remote read anymore. Okay. So we also have a present overtime function, and we also have other functions like the, you can get the sign. Uh, and you can also clamp, uh, clamp uh, between two values with a, uh, a unique function, so you don't need to do clamp min and clamp max into different uh, queries anymore. The next thing that we have added, oh yeah, now we only have a few minutes of, uh, of data, yeah. Uh, there is uh, no uh, negative offset support, which means that Previously, offset enables you to take uh, a vector to, to select a metric in the past. Uh, now, in some cases, you can actually uh, do the opposite, so you can uh, use a negative offset to see a metric in the future, uh, which uh, is useful when uh, the metrics that you are looking at don't have the right timestamp, and sometimes also when you are debugging, it makes it easy to just uh, act on your query, and it feels natural to just uh, do a negative offset to do that. Uh, I, w I had one provider, basically they, they gave us metrics uh, with a 20 minutes delay, which was not super useful and we actually had to uh, hack into Grafana at the time because you can also change in Grafana the offset, but now we can do it natively uh, in Grafana and uh, in Prometheus and just to uh, offset minus 10 minutes. This is now stable, so you, if you are using a uh, recent Prometheus version, you don't need to enable anything. Uh, during the last year, it was still behind the feature flag, but now we made it generally available. Then there is the add modifier. Uh, the add modifier enables you, it's like the offset in PromQL, but it will be, give you uh, with uh, fixed time. So you can select a metric at a fixed time, so if I show you this one. Um, what do we have here with many different buckets? Um, let me look for a, a query that will be available locally. I, I, what do we have with HTTP? Okay. So here I have um, the Prometheus HTTP request. Um, and um, if I want to, uh, to take the biggest, the, the number of requests, well, this is a, don't look at the, the value, so I don't have many metrics there, so I will just. But if I want to see uh, the, request that has the most, the most, um, the biggest value, I would use top K. So, like this. 
But the issue is that, you see, over time, I will get a different value. So I will get for each step in my query, I will get the, the highest value at that moment. What can be interesting is uh, when you look at CPU usage or a CPU request, you want to see, okay, I have something going on right now, and I want to see uh, the evolution of that one. So what I can do is I can just take my query like this. I will say, okay, I want to see, in this case, primitive HTTP request total. Uh, we, the first part will ask as, as the selector, so this is the matrix I want to see, but I will, next to the top K function, I will say, yeah, but I want to see the biggest uh, metric, but at the end of my query. So if I do at end like this, now I only see uh, the, the metric which has the highest value at the end of the range, but I can see its evolution over time. Uh, and I could do top K two or three to see the two or three uh, biggest ones. So this is the main use case for the at function. Uh, it takes, it can take start and, so here I have the two biggest one, uh, but it can also take a uh, Unix timestamp. So, um, and this is also now available directly in Prometheus without enabling anything. So now there is also a formatting option in, Prometheus, in the Prometheus UI. Uh, there will be a lightning told about it. I will just, when you click that button, you will see it will just match the query, but there will be more about that in the lightning talk. The next thing that we have added is um, Autogo Maxprox, I think is quite useful. So you know that Golang, you can, uh, you can mess with a number of processes and when you are in a container environment or when Prometheus is just not alone in the universe, uh, now we can look at the C group configuration to define how many CPU uh, the Go runtime should use. So we are using a Go Max prop and you can just enable it with one command line flag. So if you are in a container environment, when you know that you only allocate a certain CPU to Prometheus, you can actually tell it so it will be optimized uh, to do that. At least the current time will be optimized to do that. The next big feature uh, is native histograms, but uh, I will let uh, Bjorn and Ganesh speak about them just after this talk. Um, and the same for out of order ingestion, so now Prometheus uh, will be able to ingest metrics uh, out of order, but there will also be a talk today. The next thing in the Prometheus server is long-term support, uh, which means that we, are, we now have a LTS version uh, that you can use. So uh, in this case, it, we started in July with Prometheus 2.37, which means that we are supporting it for at least six months, so uh, we'll probably extend that to a year. But the goal is really that uh, you ha we have the six-week releases of Prometheus, but the issue is that after six weeks, basically, you don't get any bug fixes. With the LTS version, uh, you get bug fixes for six months. So the 2.37, the last uh, Miller update was on Friday because there was a Go security uh, release. So we issued a new um, bug fix release with 2.37 that also contained two additional bug fixes. So if you want to use an up-to-date Prometheus, uh, you can pick that LTS version, which will be maintained for a, a lot more than regular releases. We'll probably pick another one in one or two releases to become the next LTS and maintain two of them in parallel. Um, so yeah, pl please, if you need more stability, uh, like especially with the latest uh, features, uh, like out of order ingestion and native histograms, those features change a lot of the code path of Prometheus. Or I, when you make such changes, there are always risk of bugs, but the LTS uh, is a lot more stable if you need to have more stability in uh, your environment, or if just your team doesn't want to upgrade every six weeks, now we have a solution for you. So Alert Manager, um, it's a bit old. Those two features are a bit old, but now you can um, decide for a receiver when you want to receive the alerts. So if you have an on-call receiver that should only receive the alert during the night, you can just configure that in the app manager itself. 
and you also have negative matchers, which means that uh, instead of routing the alerts based on a positive matcher, like all the alerts to production needs to go to that receiver, you can do the opposite and just do, okay, all the alerts that are not production should go to that receiver. Um, but what is more exciting with the alert manager is that we have new receivers. Uh, basically, we have added AWS SNS, and we have added Telegram, and Discord will come soon while, while Simon will cut a release, so you can knock Simon today to get a new release if you need to use Discord in your alert manager. The code is already uh, in main, so it should be quite straightforward. Um, and we are probably looking to add more receivers in the future again. Let's look at the exporters. First, we have new ways to reach the exporters. Well, this is being deployed across the, uh, the different exporters. We have added system socket activation, which means that if you are running the node exporter in a big fleet, um, well, you don't have to start all of them when your machine is booting, but you can just say uh, that you only want to have the node exporter, for example, starting at the first scrape. So when Prometheus will scrape the uh, the node exporter, then systemd will say, okay, now you need to start. This is not released yet. It is, um, it will be released soon, I expect, but the, it is part of the exporter toolkit, which is a library that we are using across the exporter and Prometheus itself. Uh, so it will be released to everyone soon. And we are also now supporting multiple bind addresses. Uh, so if you are using Prometheus on a multi home machine and you don't want to, for example, expose it uh, on the um, catch all address, you can now say, okay, I want to expose this on those three uh, IP addresses. You just need to use the uh, bind command line option multiple times. The node exporter, well, in the node exporter, we have new collectors. Um, some of them, for example, CCTL collector is very useful. Uh, you can take a filter and you can decide which value you can export uh, from the uh, CCTL uh, options. We have SL Linux, so you can uh, monitor that SL Linux is still enforced in your fleet. Uh, DMI to get an inventory or the version of your BIOS machine, and we also now support OS releases, so uh, if you want to check that your OS are uh, up to date or all the same or just do some categorization in some dashboards, you can now do it. The next one is the MySQL exporter. Quite amazingly, multi-target is coming, which means that you will be able to configure one MySQL exporter to monitor multiple databases. Um, it's not released yet, but the code is in main and we have users running it in production already. Uh, so this will also come in the next MySQL exporter release. So one exporter will be able to just monitor multiple uh, targets. Uh, you will just need to add a parameter to the MySQL exporter to say, okay, I want to connect to uh, the database A, for example. The black box exporter now has a host name parameter, which means that um, you can, for example, use DNS to discover all the IP addresses of your, of your system and then uh, tell the black box exporter to monitor a specific IP address but still pass the host name of your actual server. So in this case, we are monitoring Prometheus.io. Uh, we use the IP address, but we actually set the host name Prometheus.io. So if you have multiple uh, IP addresses that you want to monitor and you are using, for example, SNI, so you have multiple vhosts on the same uh, IP address, then you can uh, use the new option. When you are using a proxy, you can also now skip uh, the result phase, so the black box exporter will send the raw uh, query to the proxy. Uh, that is because some proxies, they uh, only support whitelisting uh, host names and not IP addresses. So if you are in that situation, you can just, okay, I just want to pass the complete host name to the proxy and the proxy will deal with it. And next up, we have added support for gRPC. So in the gRPC protocol, there is a L check, a generic L check uh, provided, and now you can just use that natively with the black box exporter. Uh, in the ecosystem, we have a new client library this year. Uh, it's the Rust client. So uh, if you are using Prometheus and Rust, you might be interesting to look at that one, uh, which is made by Max from the Prometheus team. Um, and we have the Prometheus Community Organization. So it's an organization which is uh, 
still managed by the Prometheus team, but we have a lot of external contributors. We have more than 30 repositories, namely we have the ECS exporter, which, is, which has been contributed by uh, Amazon. SmartCTL, we have the systemd exporter. The JSON exporter is an exporter that enables you to query a JSON API and to convert the value that you receive inside into metrics. Um, Elasticsearch, Postgres, uh, the Windows exporter have moved in the community as well, so it's the old WMI exporter. We have Pushprox, which helps with um, traversing NAT with Prometheus. And then we have the Elm chart repository, which is maintained by a lot of people uh, directly now in the Prometheus community. Next thing is there is a Prometheus certifi uh, certified associate certification available at the Linux uh, Foundation uh, training and certification. Uh, we launched that in September, so uh, two months ago. For the cloud providers out there and other people who say that they uh, want to provide PromQL, Prometheus, anything compatibility, uh, we are working in a conformance program, which uh, Richard will talk about tomorrow, so I will not spoil that either. Uh, just look at uh, Richie's talk. Uh, it's going to be super interesting because a lot of people say that they somehow are Prometheus compatible, but uh, when you try to use it, you are very surprised by the output. Last week, we, Julius and uh, Chronosphere also announced that they were open sourcing problems. Uh, so I will also not uh, spoil you is a uh, lightning tool, but Julius will do a lightning tool today about it and show you what exactly is Promlens, but you should be pretty excited about it. And that was it for my highlights. Uh, if you have any questions, I will take them. Otherwise, we can go to Ganesh's talk. Okay, thank you everyone.